Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball video for you this evening. Look what we got in our shop. Our brother Rod, our buddy Rodney, our brother, our buddy Rodney brought us his Stern Galaxy to do a little bit of work on. I've been wanting to get one of these so we could play it a little bit for a while, and he brought it by, and uh, we get to mess with it a little bit. Uh, you hear all my electronics humming here in the background. Boy, I got stuff humming away all over the building. This is one of Stern's best games, in my opinion. Stern Galaxy. So we're going to play it a little bit, and we're going to talk a lot about it in uh, in one order or another. Um, I didn't do too much work to it. He had some light bulbs that weren't working right, and he, uh, he the, the flipper was sticking. So just a little bit of stuff. Um, but all in all, it's working pretty good now. Whew. Wow. So here's what's so cool about this game. One, the gameplay is awesome. The artwork's awesome. But here's the deal. This was designed by Harry Williams. Harry Williams is like the Godzilla of pinball. Harry Williams is that Williams. The Williams. So he's a guy who's working as like an amusement operator somewhere. I think he was running like a one of those uh, carnival games somewhere or something or on the boardwalk or at the beach or something. And uh, decided to start designing pinball machines, which other people were already designing, but he got into it. So when he, when he started, they were very simple things. They were little countertop games or, uh, you know, basically like, uh, kind of like pachinko machines, but, um, you know, pinball, but, but not the way we know them. So they would just have a few little holes and you'd shoot the ball and they'd land in the holes and, um, then you would figure out how much you scored by looking at the holes. It didn't even keep your score or anything. Of course, this is way before flippers or anything. So he starts designing those. He eventually designed 150 different titles. He designed Galaxy when he was like 73 years old. Came out of retirement to design a few games for Stern. And this is one of them. And to be honest, it's one of his best games. So the guy was doing his best stuff after he retired. Just, just an amazing uh, figure in the history of pinball. Um, so he started Williams, and I, I might get some of the story wrong, but I'll just tell you the gist of it. He started Williams back in the 40s. Um, before that, he was already designing pinball machines for other companies. Uh, started his own company in the 40s, Williams, which has went on to be, you know, one of the biggest, pin, probably the biggest pinball company of all time. He, he hired a guy, or not hired, but uh, started working with a gentleman named Sam Stern at some point. And Mr. Stern bought half of the company from Mr. Williams. So Sam Stern and Harry Williams were thick as thieves and uh, worked together at Williams kind of through their heyday. That the one that you hear buzzing is that Williams game over there. <laughs> it's got a little buzz in it. Um, it doesn't have the glass on it, so maybe we can just hear it more than the other ones. Um, <laughs> but uh, Mr. Sam Stern bought half the company and kind of co-owned Williams with Harry Williams. And they made all kinds of titles and just did business together forever, right? Well, they eventually sold the company. And another company was, you know, using the Williams name and continued running it and doing kind of the same. And uh, eventually, Mr. Stern or Mr. Williams retired. Uh, he was still designing after he sold the company, though. But eventually, he retired, and uh, another old-time company named Chicago Coin went out of business, went bankrupt, or whatever, and decided that they were going to sell off all of their property. So they sold all of their assets and everything, and Mr. Sam Stern decided that he would buy all of the assets of Chicago Coin and create Stern Electronics back in the day. So that was in 1976. So he creates Stern and calls up his old buddy, Mr. Harry Williams, one of the greatest pinball designers to ever walk the earth, who 
at one point owned Williams, you know, created Williams and said, hey, you want to come make some more pinball machines? And he said, why, of course I do. And so he came to Stern and he made Wildfire for them and he made uh, Dracula. I think I'm going to be getting uh, Shane's Dracula pretty soon to work on, is what I hear through the grapevine, so we'll, we'll film some stuff of that. And then he made Galaxy. Galaxy is just a cool one. Just a cool design, plays great. So uh, he's well into his 70s by then, and he's making games that kind of compete with Williams. They, they were smart enough to hire Mr. Williams to work at Stern instead of working at Williams. Um, but like I said, he had that long relationship with Sam, uh, with Sam Stern and then he, uh, Gary Stern was running, uh, Stern at the time. Uh, the Stern pinball that you know of today is the reincarnated version of basically the same company after a bunch of bankruptcies and ups and downs and stuff. But the, the same gentleman that is running Stern pinball today is the one that was running Stern pinball when they made this machine with Mr. Harry Williams. Uh, Harry died about three years after he created this machine. It's noteworthy to mention that in 19... This was right at the beginning of 80. Towards the... I think it's the end of 80. I believe it's 1980. Williams was really killing it because of uh, you know a lot of great designers they had. But they had uh, Steve Ritchie working for him, And Steve created Firepower. Awesome game. So firepower, multi-ball, speech, plays fast as hell. And about three months after he released Firepower, the old man, Harry Williams, now he released Firepower for Williams Pinball, the old man, Harry Williams, put out Flight 2000. Speech, fireball, wide body, whereas Firepower is a normal body, a normal size, wide body pinball machine, and you can argue that uh, Flight 2000 is a more complex game because it's got the little ball lock up in the top left and everything. Um, super creative, just cool as hell. The guy still had it after all those years, and this is one of his great games. So we're going to play it a little bit. Did I sell it enough for you? I was reading on the, M the Internet Pinball Database. They said that the, the cabinet art, the artist that are related to this game said they had nothing to do with the cabinet art. They think that the people, the company that made the cabinets just came up with it on their own. So the cabinet artwork is pretty basic, but it looks all right. This particular one is in really nice shape in my opinion. So that's what you got. All right, so let's check out the back glass. At first glance, it's in really good shape. There is some fl some flaking in the middle, but it's such an interesting kind of design that you can't tell. All of that that you're seeing is flaking. All of those cracks, I guess you might call that crazing, but it fits the art. See the bulbs through it? It really fits the art. I mean, you can't even really tell. If, if you don't get up close to it and then look at it, if you don't know what you're looking at, you wouldn't even know that that's messed up, but it is. Let's see if I can zoom in where you can tell. That is not white paint. That's where the paint has perfectly cracked and made it look like it's... <laughs> that it's painted like that, but it's not. It's just a beautiful... Beautiful game. Now, originally it had the standard orange, amber um, displays. Very similar to this one in the middle. But when the whoever the gentleman was that owned this before uh, Rodney uh, decided to do a thing where he puts a he put a different color replacement LED display in to replace the plasmas. And I got to tell you. It looks really good. You wouldn't think it would, but that's a damn good idea. It looks nice for this game. Now, it might not look perfect on everything, but this one has a lot of colors in it. Um, on the play field here, you're going to see that there's different colored lights all over the place. So for this title, that's a that's an excellent little addition. So he's got a green LED for the first player. Second player is white. Uh, third player is blue, and fourth player is red. And then they've got amber 
in the middle. Usually I don't like stuff like that, but I think it looks really nice. Alright, so let's check out the play field. What did he is there anything interesting on this play field? Let's see here. So the bonus is kind of like in a horseshoe here in the front. Right? Uh, you've got two end lanes on each side. It became a little more common later on. You've got three stand up targets over here. Two pop bumpers right in the middle of the play field. And then one way up there in the top. I believe he did a similar thing on Flight 2000, if I remember correctly. You've got three rollovers kind of again two thirds up the play field instead of at the top. And then you have this crazy loop at the top. When have you ever seen another game like that? Just, you know, the guy was just stunting on people, just doing whatever the hell he wanted. What are you going to say? It's Harry Williams. What are they going to say? Are they going to say, oh, I don't know, Harry, you know? I don't know. I think maybe the rollovers should be at the top where everybody else puts them. You know, where you invented to put them, that's where they should... No, you're not going to say that. So on the left side, there's four drop targets. Again, with different colored stars on each one. And then you've got a spinner. That's just a hell of a shot. Look at that shot. It's straight above you, almost in the middle of the play field. And it's just a shot to the rollovers. Very unique. You don't see stuff like that very often. And then you have this weird little turnaround here. That's just to shoot it back out. Cool. I like it. All right, so let's look at the artwork. You've got these little low plastic inlane rails that uh, Stern did on Flight 2000 as well, look just like it. You've got like a pastel pink and a baby blue going on. Over here, you've got kind of like a comet. You got the obligatory naked women. You gotta have naked women on a, a 1980 pinball machine. Very tastefully done, you know. Well, uh, uh, that was kind of a butter. Well, <laughs> I can't say that. And over here. The really cool artwork, the layout is just insane. Very cool. I really like it. Uh, let's read the instructions, and then we'll look at each part of the play field that the instructions pertain to. What do you think? Galaxy. Insert coins for credit anytime that the game is on. Now, why do they say that? Let me show you what happened before that. This is what an EM says. Insert one coin and wait for a machine to reset before inserting coin for second player. So on an EM, when you do that, the score motor is turning around. So you put the quarter in, it turns on the coin relay, which turns on the start relay or the reset relay or whatever, and it starts the score motor turning. Well, if the score motor is turning and you put another quarter in, it's going to take your quarter, right? So this is you know, two or three years into the electronic era. And it says, insert for insert coin for credit any time. Game is on. So they're bragging about it, people. This stuff's digital, baby. Press credit button to start the game. Press credit button for additional players. You would not, you would be surprised how many people don't know that. We get all kinds of people. How do I start more than one player game? They don't know. Press credit button for additional players any time before ball and play number two. So the first player can start playing, and then you can walk up, and as long as they're not at ball number two, uh, you can put a quarter in, and then 
start another game and join in on their game. Kind of neat. Nobody does that, but... Okay, all drop targets down, advance the planets. Two times lights at Venus. Three times lights at Mars. Four times lights at Saturn. Five times lights at Neptune. So Venus, Mars, Saturn, Neptune. All targets down, score the lighted planet value. So you start out and you're here right which is mercury you're at 5000 and then you move up to venus well whenever you do that it's going to turn on the two times bonus and then you get to mars and it's going to turn on the three times bonus and then you get to jupiter and you get i don't know if you get to 15000 or 20000 probably to 15000 then you get to saturn and it turns on the four times bonus and so you see the point here. And then you get to uh, 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 Uranus, and you get 30,000 points. Then you get to Neptune, and you get 35,000. Well, I guess, I think it's like whatever's lit, you know. So you're at Uranus, you get 30 when you jump to Neptune. Um, but once you get to Neptune, it lights the five-time bonus, just like that. And then you can get to Pluto, which is 40,000 points, people. 40,000, just imagine. It's going to be amazing. We'll probably get there multiple times. Advancing planets to Saturn lights the sun for a special. So once you get to Saturn, the sun lights for the special, the sun special. Do you, do you, can you feel it a little bit yet? God, what a cool freaking, what a what an idea for a game. You know, you can make a game about anything, but why not run with it? He said, let's run with it, right? Where were we? Sporting, spotting galaxy lights, extra ball lanes, making extra ball lanes light, lights to shoot again. Maximum one extra ball per ball in play. That's because it says shoot again when lit. It doesn't actually give you an extra ball. It just allows you to shoot after you lose. After you lose. So you, to do that, you are supposed to spell out galaxy. So I guess, uh, yeah. So that's your four, your three rollovers, and then there is a button there too. Gala. X-C. Gala X-C. So when you, if you spot galaxy it, galaxy, it lights the extra ball lanes. Uh, so the extra ball lanes are the other in lanes. Uh, making the extra ball lanes, lights shoot again. You get a maximum of one extra ball per ball in play. Spotting galaxy again... Lights the out lane for special. There's one on each side. Special scores one replay. Now stuff like that, you can change that. They have settings usually where you can make it where the special gives you an extra ball or whatever. Or sometimes 50,000 points or something. Thumper bumpers score 100. Yes, they were called thumper bumpers. Not, not just pop bumpers. Pop bumpers, spin bumpers, jet bumpers, and thumper bumpers. Come on, people. Out hole collects all bonus and any lit multiplier. Tilt disqualifies the ball in play only. So again, they're saying that because some of the older games, when you tilted it, the whole damn game went bye-bye. I would be interested to see if Mr. Harry Williams designed another game earlier than this. Do you understand that he was designing games for 50 years? 50 freaking years this guy was making games. He made 150 games, people. Now, I know that's a number. You know, big numbers are hard for any of us to understand, including me. He made 150 different... Think about it. How long did it take him to design this game? And then that one, and that one, and that one. And he went through 150. What the hell? How is that even possible? 
All right. So let's see if he did one before that that had a similar theme. That would be interesting to see how it evolved um, up to 1980. Well, I can't find anything that he did in all of those games. I'm looking on the Internet Pinball Database that uh, really had, was anything like that. So he was still coming up with completely fresh ideas late in his life, not just his career. He's already retired. But here's an example of some of the stuff that he did. So this is Skyway. From 1954. Check out this play field. One flipper. Two out lanes in, in the middle by the flipper. There Maybe there's another flipper over here and I can't see it, but probably one flipper. And then the ball... I mean, I don't even get what he's doing. Advances arrow. I don't know how you get over there. Pop bumpers here and there. And then there's all these lanes over here that you can land in. Just old school, you know, just very creative. So he came from that era, you know. If you came from a later era, everything was kind of finalized. He came from the era where they were just making it up as they went along and just inventing new stuff. So uh, two pop bumpers in the middle and one way up on the right. You know, deal with it. And here, of course, is the great Flight 2000. It's a wide-body machine. That there are two. There's two pop bumpers up on the right, and they're not in the middle. Uh, five drop targets here. The ball lock over here. The ball walker that you lock the balls in to start multi-ball. Um, just a great game. Two end lanes on each side. Um, very fun. Spinner other spinner <laughs> um three drop targets just cool game okay so let's play a little bit of galaxy what do you think all right mr williams we're gonna play your your game here and see if it's any good i don't have to put a quarter in it though it's on free play so let's give it a little shot this is before they did speech at stern Ah. It's hitting something right there at the top of the the uh Ooh, that was nice. Ooh, boy she's snappy. She's snappy. It hits something at the top of the uh shooting lane, shooter lane. Didn't that time. Well, I just noticed the kickers are up there, not down here. Something's up with that pop bumper, too. The ring on the pop bumper gets stuck down. Okay, so it hits something on the shooter lane. And by the way, I didn't... Uh, this Somebody else worked this game. We're just testing it and fixing it. It hits something on the shooter lane right there. And then this ring on this pop bumper stays down sometimes. Which may be that it's locked on. Watch the pop bumper. Whoop, I missed it. <laughs> Oop. I haven't landed in that saucer yet. Yeah, see it? <laughs> okay.
Okay, a hundred thousand points. I can't have a pot bumper locking on, so let me let me mess with that just a little bit, and then I, I'll come back and tell you what I figured out. Okay, so the pot bumper was the switch was just adjusted really close. I widened it out just a little bit. Sometimes on some machines you have to have that really close just to make the pop bumpers work nice. Harry agrees. But on Stern, they had really cool pop bumpers. See how there is a hole in the play field under the pop bumper? That allows the skirt to go way down. So it actually go it can actually go down below the play field. It's just a neat design. So by doing that, it moves that switch really far. So you don't have to have it real close on a stern. So I'll show you. So see how it's still hitting it? And whenever you check one of these, you want to check it from all four directions. Now really there's, you know, you could argue there's 360 directions or maybe an infinite number of directions. But if you check it from four directions, it'll be pretty good. Now don't check it from this direction, this direction, this direction, and this direction. No, no, no. North, south, east, west, people. Come on. All right, so that's that. Now the ball hitting something up here, I think it was hitting that plastic. Why would it do that? It's because the shooter rod isn't sitting in the cabinet square. It's kind of hard to see. So instead of being aimed like this, it's aimed like that. That's dramatic, but you get my point. So it's not centered, it's way over here. So the way you adjust that is you mess with these screws here until you get it about right. <laughs> you, can even, um, you can even wedge something under there if you need to. It's not, it's not uh, the shooter rod is not messed up. See, it's true. It's just that it's not parallel with the side of the cabinet. It's not square. Two minor adjustments. Alright, I think that'll help it a little bit. I guess that's a skill shot, the saucer up there maybe? Let's see about our pop bumper. Oh, it's still sticking down. It must not be holding on, it's just a physical thing. might be magnetized. I've seen that before. still testing people. Of course, all you know, I'll get real good at playing it here shortly. Well, that plunger shot is smooth. At least we got that kind of fixed. Woo! That spinner is bananas. Okay. All right. I don't think the pop bumper is locking on. Uh, I think it's just getting stuck. Mm. It definitely still needs some work, but we're going to go ahead and play it a little bit. Look at that. So here's how you can tell. There you go. So now that's how we can tell, okay? So what did I just do? It's still down. So we're trying to figure out is the coil locking on and it's locking the bumper down? That's what I thought at first, so I adjusted the switch because I thought maybe the switch was getting stuck, right? 
But there's no power going to it now, so there ain't no way in the world the coil's holding it down. So what's holding it down? Well, it must be something mechanical. So the, uh, uh, or it could be something magnetic. That's kind of a weird one, but it, it happens. So the the whenever I had it up, I was te I was checking the the mechanical part of it, and it would hold down and then let go and hold down and let go. I mean, it wouldn't it wouldn't stick down. It would just go down and up, down and up like it's supposed to. But whenever you're playing it, it keeps kind of sticking down. Well, now we know it's not the coil, so the coil's not going to burn up or anything, because even with the power off, it's still stuck down. So there's, uh, it could still be something is sticking, or it very well could be that it's magnetized. Sometimes the coil stop will get magnetized, and the, the uh, plunger will just stick to the coil stop. There's a little bit of magnetism going on, especially if you think about it, the whole thing's an electromagnet, so it may have become magnetized. To fix that, you can actually take it out and hit it with a hammer. And it does some kind of stuff where it rejiggers the electrons or something. I don't know, but it, it, you can get rid of magnetism by banging on it with a hammer. Now, I'm not saying beat up your pinball with a hammer, but if you take the coil stop off and slap it around with a hammer a little bit, it very well may magnetize it. I've done that in a couple of videos. Um, but for our purposes right now, we're just going to keep playing it a little bit. We'll turn it back. Whoa, we'll turn it back on. See it stuck down? See how you can see the ring? It's down a little bit. So it's getting unstuck whenever we hit it with the ball or something, or if the other pop bumper pops, it, it's freeing that one or whatever. But let's see if we can play it. So uh, it looks to me like the secret is get lots of drop targets. Every time you drop all the drop targets, it advances a planet, and we want to try to get up to Pluto. And by the way, uh, I only uh, I only accept the list of planets that were planets when I was a kid. I'm not changing what's a planet, what's a st all that. I'm not. It's how, it's how I learned it as a kid. <laughs> Brick that one. Bloop, 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 bloop. Oh. So I'm trying to just hit the drop targets. Now you may have noticed how it came up and then one fell. That's because Stern had memory drop targets. They had a coil on them. Hmm. So the CPU could could drop it at any time. We're hitting our little plastic piece again. There's no lane change yet. I hit the one that was already dropped. Come on now. Every time I film one of these videos and then I try to do what you're supposed to do in the in the game, I score less. I have two drops now. How did that happen? Did it spot me one? Did it did it have pity on me? 94,000. I'm getting worse. Okay, let's do let's go some more. Mm. I got to stop playing with it. Whoa. Yeah, I think it's messing me up that I addressed the switch out too far. Because uh, I think usually if the if you had the pop working better than I've got it working, you could probably bounce the ball off of it a lot more into those drops.
The inlanes are deceptive because they're angled. Look how they're angled. We've made it to Venus. This kind of reminds me of Gyrus. The arcade game. What well, a spinner is great. I'm trying to decide if something's going on with the right flipper too. They slid it right by me. Hundred and eighty eight thousand. Uh, getting better. All right, I'm gonna mess with the pop bumper some more. All right, one more time with feeling. Boy, that spinner. That spinner is a thing of beauty. Ooh. So we're at Venus already. It looks like the pop bumpers actually spot the drop targets. One of the one of the caps is on backwards. Little things, folks. That one cap is on backwards. What are they doing? There we go. There we go. That's gonna make the game there. The right flipper is fine, I looked at it. It's just a little, it's it's getting some wear on it. That'd be all right, it's still nice and strong. <laughs> Whoo! How's that even possible? For a spinner to spend that much. Good lord. It's like the coolest spinner. <laughs> oh. I think Rodney told me he rolls this thing. I'm not going to get good enough to roll it, but... <laughs> we made it to Jupiter! Some more. Well, we're all over it. Missed it. Woo -hoo! How did I make the spinner and then land in the saucer? How's that work? Woo, that's a nice little drop.
I'm trying to bank it off of the left newly working drop target. Did you hear that knocker? You heard it. We have made it to Saturn. Same player shoots again. Give me them points. We're beating up the banks, people. It's only ball four. <laughs> oh. The pinball gods giveth and the pinball gods taketh away. Stearns do this really cool thing. You probably just saw it in the reflection. Just before the fifth ball, uh, he goes and plays this sound, and then it shows you all four score, like the, the high scores. Because they're telling you, hey, it's your last ball. If you want to beat the high score, this is what you got to beat. We're at Saturn. Ooh, about lost it. Oh, I, the the drop target bricked. You saw that, right? I love these games that have the cool in through the outdoor in lanes. Sometimes the you can go backwards through them. You know, you roll up the in lane. Ooh. Missed it. Missed it. Got it. <laughs> we have made it to Uranus. cool is that look at this freaking game look at this let me turn down the music so I don't get copyright struck holy moly very fun just very nice design if you don't have any of the this X works but sometimes it's out I don't understand I gotta look at that again it's always little stuff you know you gotta I'm checking them all. I think we're good, except for that X. If you don't, if you don't have an early stern yet, what in the world are you waiting for? They've got all kinds of cool games. These early sterns are just very underrated. This is one to get. If you see one around, grab it before somebody else does. How about that? Yeah, this thing plays great. Just a fun game, fast. Got some unique shots. Uh, the little gimmick of trying to get all of the planets is really cool. I like it a lot. Nice artwork, too. Just cool. Cool, cool, cool. Had to be one of the best games in 1980. Had to be. There ain't no way there was too many games in 1980 that were better. Come on, now. Had to be. So I really like it. I'm glad I finally got to mess with one a little bit. All right, so leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. We didn't have to do that, people. We were just trying to show you how cool to get. People, come on now. Come on, people. We didn't have to. You know how much. Look, I, I got. I had to get a tripod. Come on, come on, people. I had to get the tripod out. We didn't have to do all. We didn't have to do all that. All right, folks. So. <laughs> We appreciate everybody that's been watching all of our videos. If you want to support our channel, a way you can do it is down below, there is a link to Amazon. If you're going to buy anything on Amazon, use our link, and it gives us it gives us money. Look at the 20000 too. Got to mess with the lights a little bit more, Rodney. We're going to get it. Uh, if you use our link to Amazon, if you're going to buy anything on Amazon, it gives us a tip. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Uh, and last but not least... Don't forget to check out my brother, Donnie. He has his own channel here on YouTube. Uh, I work on arcade games, pinball machines, jukeboxes with my brother, Joey, and our brother, Donnie. My brother, Donnie, is the name of the channel. Works on old vehicles, uh, works on old buildings, and he has a farm with goats. 
It, how could you? It, you have to watch it. I mean, so I'm over there with him a lot on his channel. Look at look at Rodney with the 993,160. I think he said that he rolled it over that, but once it gets over a million, it doesn't. The high score won't work like that. So when you get to like 1.2 million, it thinks you're at 200,000, so it won't give you the high score. Uh-huh. And I believe him, too. He said this is one of his favorites. Very cool. I can see why. There you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one.